Hey guys, Brent here and welcome back to brentmailphotography.com. Today this tutorial I'm going to look at going away over a weekend, a long weekend, and taking along one single camera and shooting with one lens. And how I documented the whole weekend. Stick around and check it out. Hey guys, welcome back. So we went away on the Easter long weekend and all I took was the Fujifilm X-T1 and I used the 56 millimeter f1.2 lens and I documented the whole weekend and I'm going to show you the highlights just a few images from the weekend just to show you how great this little camera is and how you can actually document a weekend away that tells a story so here here are a couple from the, the first day but let me jump into them quickly and I'll just run through a few things that I really enjoyed about this camera and I'll bring up the side panel of here so we can see um, you know, so we can see what I was shooting it at. Or maybe what I'll do is I'll just hit the little info I button and it'll tell us. I'll hit it again. There we go. So it tells us what I shot it at and all these images, you know, what the aperture it was and the shutter speed. So I'm shooting everything pretty much wide open, 1.2, 1.4, f2 or so. So it just shows that beautiful shallow depth of field. This is in the campsite. So that's our dog, Romy. Uh, a couple of the kids' shots. Now this has got... Uh, uh, face recognition, um, autofocus, and most of the time it works. Sometimes it gets a bit wonky, but most of the time it does work. So look at that. Um, Amber's in focus here, and the kids in the background are out of focus, and they're not far behind her. And that's shooting at f1.2. You know, dogs are sometimes tricky because sometimes it focuses on the nose and sometimes on the eyes. <laughs> here I'm shooting at f1.4, and this is an example of shooting from very low looking up. So the great thing about the LCD display at the back is that uh, it can pivot out. So you can put the camera basically on the grass and shoot upwards and make sure that you uh, are still focused on the animal. So here's a dog sitting down and I'm shooting up at its face. So that's pretty low to the ground. Uh, just showing the shallow depth of field over there. Um, Jules is beer. Uh, got uh, the beer in focus and him out of focus. All right, the upside down fire, if you've ever wanted to know how to make a fire the correct way, this is how you make it. You make it the upside down way. So you pack all the bigger logs at the bottom, then you go smaller, smaller, smallest logs at the top, and you light it from the top, and it burns down. That's just the, the best way to build and make a fire. Ask anyone who's camped with me. <laughs> um, I learned this from Timothy Ferris's book. So there it is. Um, I'm also shooting a 1.2, f1.2, so very shallow depth of field. And there's my fire going. Perfect, right? And just remember, we've got a whole bunch of camp stuff all around it, so it's difficult to get a clean background. But you notice I did manage to get a clean background on a few of those. Awesome. Kids playing around, uh, just autofocus, trying to shoot. Now, over here, I did battle a little bit. This camera did, didn't know who to focus on probably half the time. So I've got a lot of out of focus images. I won't show you them, but I'll just show you the, the better ones. Kids playing Frisbee. And I'm quite reasonably far away. So because it's a fixed focal length lens, I, I've got to zoom in with my legs. I've got to walk closer or walk away. There's no zooming with this lens. Uh, it just shows that sh beautiful shallow depth of field. Uh, my son, Wesley. And the kiddos, you know, trying to get them all. I think it probably focused on about three faces there. And uh, I'm shooting at an f2.8 there just to get a little bit more depth of field so that I can get everyone in focus. And there's my fire going. We didn't touch it from when we light lit it. Um, this is about an hour later, so it's, uh, it's just an easy way to make a fire. Cool. And there it goes again. Now this is getting a little bit darker, obviously, at night. So the camera's still not too bad. Uh, 60th of second, ISO 1250, and I'm not seeing too much noise there. And that's much later. So now I'm starting to see a little bit of noise. We can probably zoom in, in into the blacks and we'll probably see a bit of noise. Yep, I'm seeing a bit of noise, but it's ISO 60, 6400, so 6400 ISO. And yes, a little bit of noise in the blacks, uh, as you'd expect with a crop sensor camera like that. Um, I wouldn't have had this much noise with my full-frame digital SLR, but then again, I wouldn't have taken it long because it's just too heavy. <laughs> cool. All 
All right, let's go to day two. So uh, morning again. Uh, I mean, look at this. Look at this beautiful depth of field. We'll wait for this image to load up, but it's so good. The f f one point two fifty six millimeter lens. I just love this lens. It it's a real compliment to this camera. All right, see see how beautiful, nice and sharp the eyes are, and his nose is a little bit out of focus, which is perfect. I mean, that's just excellent. Now we're getting into the next morning, and you can start seeing the mountain bikes come out. Uh, this is in another one of my videos where I, I post-processed this image. Cool breakfast. Sometimes the shallow depth of field is too shallow. I probably should have shot this at like f2 or f2.8 because you don't quite know where to look. And the camera did uh, battle a little bit to focus in in the early morning light like this. You know, bacon and eggs, people fixing their bikes. They are shot at f2 to try and get more in focus, which is probably better. Uh, there's 1.2 again, so there's a very shallow depth of field again. So let's let's have a look at that. Once the image pulls up here. There we go. So yeah, very shallow depth of field on these images. Cool. And it does make these really arty type shots. So there's f1.4. I mean, that's really shallow. Look at the specialized logo. Only the P and the E are in focus there. Jack's just got the edge of her glasses there, which is, shows the shallow depth of it. And that's f1.4. So that's not even the widest that it goes. But her glasses are in focus and her mouth is out of focus. I love that. Harlan, part of his chin is in focus the rest out of focus that's cool and then just some close-ups i love doing this because you know whenever you're telling a story you want to focus on things that people don't normally see when they out there they won't remember things like this so this is what makes this camera and your photography skills and you and thinking thinking of yourself as a artist and not just a photographer or a documenter this is how you document things, you know, getting the close-ups and, and showing close-up images really adds to the story. And that's it for day two. All right, day three, the next morning. I did a little bit of editing to that one. It's another YouTube video if you want to see it. The horse riding, it's all about the horses. It, this is you know it's rural um, Australia so it's outback I guess and uh, lots of horses and farm animals and farming and that type of stuff I like to shoot this these type of things where you got part of it in focus part of it out of focus just a little reminder of what it's all about the kids getting the talk about horse riding and everyone's looking a little bit scared because they get being told what can go wrong <laughs> This is pretty cool, you know, I don't know if you've heard in Australia, the Dries Bone brand, it's uh, it's pretty cool. And I, I noticed these uh, jackets hanging up there, so I wanted to photograph them. And I just wanted the Dries Bone in focus and everything else out of focus. Now the jackets are really dirty, <laughs> but they've been used. It's a real farm, real kind of, you know, horse cattle station, Australia type images. My son just catching the edge of him as he's uh, talking to his friends. The guy teaching them how to ride the horse. A real outback Aussie, you know, man from Snowy River type dude. My daughter looking very scared about to get on the horse. And that's it, guys. So that's the those are the images that I've taken from this weekend. What do you guys think? Did I document the weekend well enough? Uh, you know, to show what we did and what we were enjoying with all these images. You know, it's not just snapshots I'm trying to take. I'm actually trying to tell a story in a different way, my artistic way. Um, and yeah, that's that's it. And it's also a good test for the Fujifilm X-T1 and the 56mm f1.2 lens. Beautiful camera, beautiful lens. Um, I love it. Thank you, Fujifilm Australia, for loaning it to me and, and letting me test it out. Uh, I guess the only drawbacks from the camera that I can find is the focusing. 
it's still not quite there when I, when I compare it to my digital SLR camera, which focuses perfectly 95% of the time. The, the Fujifilm X-T1, probably 60 to 70% of the time it's focusing correctly. And then, uh, then sometimes it doesn't know where to focus. That's it, guys. What do you think of this uh, blog post? Please leave me comments below. Um, let me know what you like and what you don't like. If you want to hear more blog posts like this or videos like this where I review cameras and I show you how I capture a weekend or a story. Um, if you leave me comments and you like it, I'll make more videos like this. Awesome, guys. Make sure you go to my website to check out these images. I'll have them all there as larger images. Go to brentmailphotography.com to check them out. This is Brent. Have an awesome day.